coupon code is expiring Friday, but GDP data is coming out. Oh yes, 2% versus the 1.4%. Let's go American economy again. Let's go. That could end up pushing uh, some Fed pressure again there to continue uh, you know, with those hikes. But let's go. GDP annualized quarter over quarter coming in hot, baby. Hot, hot, hot. At uh, 2%. Expectation was 1.4%. Personal consumption beat 4.2. Expected 3.8. GDP price index. Let's go. It comes in weak. 4.1 versus 4.2. Let's go. Core PCE comes in weak also. 4.9, expectation was 5. This is great because now you've got a hot GDP and even weaker GDP price data. That's awesome. That's really, really good. That's absolutely fantastic. Let's see uh, what, what, I love this guy. Let's see what he has to say about it. Uh, I want his reaction. 3.1 is not the lowest though. 3.9 was the lowest after the 9% read, which was the highest in 81. That was in Q2 of 22. So progress being made, but obviously slow progress. If you look at the core personal consumption expenditure, quarter over quarter, that's 4.9%. That's one tenth less than the 5% we were expecting. And how does that and up to history. Well, second quarter of 21, not 22, is a high watermark. That was at 6%, the highest since 83. The lowest it's been was the fourth quarter of last year at 4.4 and now 4.9%. So we see that this is also very sticky. As a matter of fact, uh, we've had several numbers. He's such a bear. Uh, he's such a bear. Oh, it comes in soft. Oh, but it's still sticky. <laughs> The survey was for it to be sticky. Oh, uh, jobless claims just came in. Uh, 239 for job. Oh my gosh, these are good numbers too. What the heck? It's so good. 239 for initial jobless claims. The expectation was 265. That's a big miss. Uh, stable on the revisions. And then for continuing claims, a miss again. 1.742. We were expecting 1.765. That's a 23,000 miss. This is amazing. So, you mean to tell me this is supposed to be bearish? St like, listen, okay? People are so worried about recession and earnings recession. And, and you're going to come in here and be like, but inflation's still sticky. Suck it. If GDP is doing great, inflation is trending down, we're potentially not going to see a recession, knock on wood. Uh, we're not seeing this unemployment surge. This economy is just barreling through uh, and, and forward. And so, okay, inflation's gonna take some time to get down. What did Jay Powell tell us? He literally told us our expectation is inflation doesn't return to 2% until 2025. Bro straight up said it's gonna take two years to get inflation down from today, which means like three years total, three and a quarter years total to get inflation back down. That's crazy. And what? We're worried about another 25 or 50 basis points of hikes. You know, there was a fantastic piece I read the other day. I can't remember who put it together. I don't think it was Goldman. Uh, I can't remember who it was. But anyway, it was a fantastic piece. They talked about, uh, here, I'm going to draw it for you. I don't know if you know what this is. If you're a math person, you know what this is. Ready for this? That's what they talked about. What does that mean? You should be screaming that at the top of your lungs right now. Kevin, that is a triangle. No, it's actually delta. So delta is the change. And what's the delta of rates that we've had over the last year? 500 basis points. What's the delta, the change of rates that we're expecting over uh, the next six months? Like 50 bips almost worst case. Like, really? Really? Over the last year, we had 500 bips of, of rate hikes. And now people are bitching about, but what if the Fed does another 25 or 50? Bro, look at the Delta. It's literally one tenth as painful as what you had in the 2022 year. One tenth as bad. It was actually a great piece. I, I, I wish I remembered where I found it, but it was a really great argument. It's like, 
How could you be bearish about rate hikes? Who cares if it's just a slightly bit higher? Yes, yes, there are still bearish arguments. Kevin, what about the lag defects? Okay, what about, um, you know, the potential earnings recession? Well, we, unfortunately, data is just not lining up with that idea. I mean, we'll see. Maybe Q2 earnings will suck. And you know what? If you're worried about Q2 earnings sucking, go buy yourself some hedges. I mean, look at how low volatility is right now. Uh, here, look at the VIX. Look at the chart of the VIX. It literally broke my downtrend. It's so low. I have to go out to the weak chart because it's such. it's been such a such weak paper hands over here. Look at that. There's my downtrend that I had. <coughs> it broke that. So now I'm going to have to draw a new trend because there's no volatility. It's just been straight up, basically. I guess you could call it a channel to some extent. Uh, but it's, it's kissing the bottom. This is crazy. I mean, really, this should be starting to conver converge down over here. Better off probably using a moving average. Uh, but point is... This is not this is not a market that seems horribly uh, uh, scary in terms of uh, volatility. So go ahead, buy your puts and buy your hedges. Uh, and in low vol environments, it's probably not great to sell options. But it depends on the individual security you're trying to hedge, <clears throat> because they'll all have their own volatilities, especially going into earnings. But uh, point is, this is fantastic. I mean, this is almost as good as the delicious, juicy lectures that are coming out for free over the weekend for existing course members with that awesome coupon expiration tomorrow at, uh, uh, at uh, 11.59 p.m. Next coupon will expire. It's gonna be a big one. Uh, for a moment there, we were thinking about doing four phases of price increase. Or what. We're getting rid of all of that. Basically, that was just an excuse for me to get the lectures up slower. And I'm like, no, I got real work to do. We got a lot of work to do. We're getting these lectures up this weekend. And uh, so we're just going to raise the price uh, in total, large price increase tomorrow night. So anyway, put, put the pieces of the puzzle together here. If the unemployment data isn't coming in as bad as expected, and the GDP data is coming in strong, and the price data is coming in weak, isn't that literally the perfect case scenario? I mean, some people will call it the... Uh, Goldilocks uh, environment. And uh, yeah, that doesn't mean we don't want to be careful and, and prudent, but I think we could cheer it. So let's look at some of the actual data. So what do we have here? Real gross domestic product increased at an annual rate of 2% in the first quarter of 2023, according to the third estimate released by the BEA. In the fourth quarter, real GDP increased by 2.6%. Fantastic. The GDP estimate released today is based on more a complete source of data than were available for the second estimate issued last month. The second estimate was 1.3%, and we're revising that uply primarily to reflect revisions to exports and consumer spending that were partly offset by downward revisions in non-residential fixed investment and federal government spending. So non-residential fixed investment, think, think that's such a fancy word, Think about it like gigapress, okay? When Elon buys a sexy... Oh, sorry, that's like an airlock sound because I watched Passenger yesterday. First time ever watching Passenger. Lauren and I watched it together. Damn! If you haven't watched that movie yet, you gotta watch it. It's, it's fantastic. Anyway, so... The increase in, uh, hashtag not sponsored, uh, the increase in real GDP in the first quarter reflected increases in consumer spending, uh, okay, I swear that said esports, but it actually says exports, uh, state and local government spending, federal government spending, non residential whatever, okay, so uh, there's a pretty chart. Compared to the fourth quarter, the deceleration in real GDP in the first quarter was primarily f reflected, uh, primarily reflected a downturn in private inventory investment and a slowing of non-residential fixed, fine, offset by an acceleration of consumer spending. Fantastic. Personal income increased in the first quarter, up from the previous estimates. Great. Disposable income increased 12.9% in the first quarter, an upward revision of $26.4 billion from the previous. Personal savings were revised up. The personal savings rate, oh my god, 
Oh my gosh. What? The personal savings rate as a percentage of disposable income was 4.3%. Up from 0.1. Oh, wow. That's remarkable. <clears throat> wow. Okay, just a heads up why I'm remarking about that is because this fell to like 2.4% for a while in 2022, and it's starting to skyrocket again, this disposable income. This is fantastic. All right, let's see here. So real domestic, real gross domestic income, it's just total uh, for business and, and individuals. Uh, decreased 1.8% in the first quarter, upward revision of an upward revision of 0.5 percentage points <coughs> from a previous estimate. All right, whatever. Profits, updates to GDP, GDP by industry. All right, let's see what we have over here. Q1, government. See, look at that government pop. In 2022, Q2 and 3, government was pretty low. Government popped over here. And then private goods in Q1 was actually negative, a negative contributor. Wow. Okay, what do we have here? Contributions to percent change in real GDP by industry group. Okay, so these are contributions. On the right are positive, on the left is negative. Finance and insurance is the most negative, followed by manufacturing and wholesale trade and utilities. The best was actually retail trade, so y'all go into the mall and buy and stuff. Healthcare, agricultural, forestry, and hunting, ooh, uh, and fishing. Real estate, rental and leasing, accommodation, travel, arts and entertainment. All the fun stuff is up there. I wanna go fishing again. It's been a while. I don't know, bears. What do you have to say this time? It's just, it just, like, if you're bigger, it's okay. We can still be friends. We can still, you know, drink water together at the bar. Um, or, or, you know, coffee at the coffee shop, right? So, um, but this is crazy. Like, all of us should be looking at this going, this is a blowout. This data is a blowout. Expected 1.4, we got 2.0 on, on GDP. And then price is coming. Remember, like, what was it? <clears throat> 10 minutes ago or whatever? Or I think it was at the beginning of the live stream. I'm like, okay, the best we can hope for is a GDP beat and a miss on inflation. But, you know, the world can't be perfect. Let's just hope for the best. And that's literally what we got. <laughs> Where's the button? Gain the lead. Yeah. <laughs> now, I want you to know this. When it comes to AI, time is what's going to make you money. And if you can prove that value to an employer, you'll always be able to be employed. So this is another way of making sure that you don't get replaced.